So in this video I'm going to show you how we can use Photoshop to edit a terrain model and essentially insert a glacier onto the landscape in New Hampshire's White Mountains. So to start out with I'm in Natural Scene Designer and I'm just going to come up to the file menu and import a grayscale DEM for this White Mountains area. Click open. My maximum elevation range here is going to be 1916 meters and the minimum is 123 meters. And if we just grab the zoom tool and back out here a little bit, you can see here's the presidential range. This is Mount Washington right here. And we're going to look at inserting a glacier right in this valley right here. You can see the glacial cirque here and here. And this is going to be sort of a two-tongued glacier that goes up to the west towards Mount Washington and also towards Mount Madison. If we look at that in 3D, we can come over here and get our camera, rotate that back around. And if we pan up a little bit, this is that valley where the glacier is going to be. So let's come back over to Photoshop. And here in Photoshop, I'm going to go to File and Open, and just open up that same TIFF that represents that terrain model. Click Open. So here's that TIFF. You can see that the whiter areas are the higher areas, and the darker areas are the lower areas. And we want to put that glacier right around in here. That glacier is going to be right in this area. But I actually have a map that I can overlay on top of this digital elevation model to help me determine where I want to put the glacier extents. So I'll zoom back out so I can see my entire elevation model. And then I come back up to file and open a second file. I have this glacial extent reference map JPEG. If I open that, you can see it's just this reference map right here that I've taken out of a piece of peer review literature that shows the extent of that glacier on Mount Washington. It's fairly grainy because I've resampled it so that it's the same resolution and extent as the map that we're going to overlay it on. And to get that onto this terrain model that we have here, I'll come back over and open up the layers for this image. And all I need to do is right click on that background layer and say duplicate layer. And I'm going to duplicate that layer in this New Hampshire terrain model. So it's going to duplicate layer. I'll call that reference map. And it'll duplicate it in this terrain model. I'll click OK. And then when we come back over to the terrain model, you can see we have two layers. We've got the reference map layer and then our background, which is the terrain model. I can select that reference map layer and change the opacity so that it's somewhere around 50%, and that way we can see the terrain model right through it. And if we zoom into this area now, you can see this is the area where we're going to draw the boundary of that glacier. So let's go ahead now and make a third layer. We'll call that layer glacier. I just double clicked on it, and then I can type right in the name there. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. Now we want to use what's called the polygonal lasso tool in order to draw the boundary of that glacier. So it's the third one down here. If I click and hold, you can see there's the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. We want to just stick with the polygonal one. And what that'll allow us to do is draw straight line segments connected with each other around that glacier. So I'm just going to get started here, sort of tracing roughly the outline that I can see on this map of the glacier. There's a PDF that's also in this folder that has a much higher resolution version of this map on it so that you can get a better sense of what exactly you're drawing around here. And it also has some information about the profile of the glacier, which will be helpful later. But I'm just going to make a very rough outline of the glacier. And you can see that when I get to the end here, just like drawing a polygon in Illustrator, when I overlap with the end that I've already drawn, you get the little circle, and that's indicating that you're going to close that selection. So once I've closed the selection, you can see it's outlined by this dancing ant marquee here. And what I want to do to save the selection is right-click on the selection and say Make Work Path. I'm going to specify that my tolerance for that work path is one pixel. Hit OK. And then you can see here in the Paths panel that we have a new work path. To save that work path, we can just drag it down to the little New button down here, and that'll be cemented as Path 1. And we can change the name of that just by double-clicking on it, just like the layers. And I'm going to call that Glacier 1. So now we have the outline of that glacier in this selection. We can come back over to our layers and turn off the reference map, and then we can get to work drawing our glacier. So just for reference, I'm going to bring up this PDF that has a better quality version of this map in it. You can see there's the glacier that we just outlined that sort of hugs around Mount Jefferson there. Mount Washington is a little bit to the south of it. And if I scroll down in that same paper, you can see it gives us some profiles for the glacier. And this gives us a sense of how we want to change the terrain in order to represent this glacier. So the first thing we notice about the glacier is that it's offset a certain distance from the terrain that it's lying on, so the glacier has a thickness. And then the top of the glacier is relatively flat, so we don't want to just offset the terrain entirely. We want to sort of create this flat area that is higher than the terrain, but isn't just an offset of the terrain. And then thirdly, you'll notice that at the edge of the glacier, it sort of tapers off. It doesn't just have a flat or a hard edge, it kind of tapers off down towards the end. So we want to do a few things in making our glacier. First of all, we want to create this surface that slopes from the top to the bottom. 
So you can see that the top of the glacier is higher than the bottom of the glacier and therefore there should be a gradient between the top and the bottom. And then we want to make the edge of the glacier a bit soft so that it tapers off towards the terrain rather than just being a really hard edge. So the first thing we need to do is fill this glacier area with a gradient that represents the slope from the top to the bottom. So that this glacier layer selected, you're only working in the layer that you have currently selected. And then I want to turn this path that we just created back into an area selection so that we can put our fill only inside of the area selection. So I'm going to come back over to the paths panel here, right click on that glacier one path, and then say make selection. I'm going to say that it should be anti-alias, but I won't put a feather radius on there right now. I'll click OK. And now we get to draw our gradient. The gradient is going to be drawn using the foreground color and the background color as the two ends of the gradient. So we want to set the foreground color and the background color to be colors that represent elevations that are just greater than the top of the area that the glacier is going to be in and the bottom of the area that the glacier is going to be in. This will make sure that our glacier is raised just above the terrain. So in order to capture those colors, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, which is right up here. And the eyedropper tool will take color from a certain location and apply that to the foreground color. So I'm going to grab color from just above the glacier so that the top of our glacier will be just higher in elevation than the terrain that it's sitting on. So I'll take that color right there and that'll be applied to our foreground color. Then I'm going to switch my foreground and background color so that I can take another color for the toe of the glacier. I'm going to make that just above the toe of the glacier here. And you can see that it's applied that again to my foreground color. So now I've got stored in my foreground and background the range of that gradient that I want to draw. Now I'm going to come up here and get the gradient tool. It's hiding behind the paint bucket tool. So if we click and hold on the paint bucket, then we've got the gradient tool there. And now we can draw with the gradient tool that gradient inside the selection. And just like ArcMap, if you have something selected, it will only work within that area. So it's only going to draw this gradient fill inside of our selected area where the glacier is. Now we just want to make sure that we draw the gradient in the right direction, and you can do this through somewhat of a process of trial and error. To make the gradient, you just click and drag so you get this line that comes out, and that's going to be the axis of your gradient. And I'm going to click and drag from one end of the glacier area to the other. And you can see that I've just made my gradient in the wrong direction. I've got the low points, which are the darker points, up at the top of the glacier, and the high points, which are the lighter points, up down at the bottom. So I'm going to redraw my gradient just by dragging that bar in the other direction. And you can see now I've got those low points, the dark points down here at the bottom, and the high points up here. And you can see that the tones at the top and bottom of the glacier are just lighter than the corresponding tones that are adjacent to them in these cells. And that means that our glacier is going to be raised just a little bit above the landscape. The next thing we want to do is make our glacier slightly convex so it sort of bulges up in the center and is a bit thinner at the edges than it is in the center. So to do that, we're just going to blur the edge of the glacier slightly by using a tool called Feather, and then we'll increase the brightness of that new selected area, which is slightly blurred, so that we increase the height of the center portion, and that height sort of tapers out towards the edge based on that feather radius that we described. To start with, we've got our selection. We're going to come up to the Select menu and go to Modify and click Feather. And we want to do a feather radius of one pixel. Again, cartography is usually a pretty subtle art. We're not going to go with very large numbers here, so we'll stick with the feather radius of one pixel. The change will hardly be noticeable. And then we're going to increase the brightness of the selection by going to Image and Adjustments and Brightness and Contrast. And we're going to increase the brightness also by a very small number, by two. And again, this will probably not be noticeable to the eye, but it will add just a little bit of bulging height to our glacier when we put it into Natural Scene Designer and these values become elevations. Click OK. Our final step here is going to be to remove the jaggedness of the edge of our glacier. You can see that the selection here is somewhat aliased, which means that it has the stair-stepping effect. And we just want to make sure that that aliasing isn't particularly visible when we bring it into Natural Scene Designer and make elevations out of it, because then we'll just have these blocky looking terrain features. So our first step here is going to be to deselect. We're going to remove the selection by coming up to select and saying deselect. You can also hit control D. And then we just want to blur this entire layer slightly to remove some of the blockiness from around the edges of our glacier. So again I'm just going to come to layers and make sure that this glacier layer is selected because that's the layer that we want to blur. And then I'll come up here to filter and blur and apply a Gaussian blur which is going to allow us to specify the amount of blur that we want. And again, we're going to use a pretty subtle blur here, two pixels. Click OK. And you can see that the edges of our glacier have just gotten a bit fuzzied. And this is going to help it blend into the terrain that's around it when we put it into Natural Scene Designer. OK, so now we've finished editing our terrain. We can zoom back out and see our whole terrain. So I'll come up here to File and hit Save. And we won't use any of these compression settings, but it is going to save it as a TIFF. Including layers will increase the file size. That's okay with me. Now it's time to bring it into Natural Scene Designer.